but they say that we are not perfect. And that's true. Make our people perfect first. So my question has been to them, I said, when will you, they become perfect? Give me a time limit. Give me a time limit that give us five years, give us 50 years, give us 500 years, and in 500 years time, we all Muslims will be angels walking this earth. If you don't believe in the Quran, get lost, man, be out of it. Let own up that you are a Christian or a Hindu or them or whatever you are. Don't say you are a Muslim and you say, no, ah, we are not to tell the person. Allah says, don't say that I begot a son. The most abominable assertion, Allah says. The worst swearing you can give, Allah says. Does it move any Muslim? Any Muslim, I'm asking. When Allah cries from his heaven that these guys are swearing with the worst swearing. Huh? When I swear you, your mother, you want to break my jaw. But when they swear Allah, you say you love Allah more than anything else. You love Allah more than your father and your mother. No, that's what you all claim. You all claim that, don't we? And when they swear him, what do you do? You laugh <laughs> like monkeys. Bloody monkeys. During Sheikh Ahmed Didat's religious lecture in England which entitled, Pope and the Dialogue, Sheikh Didat again received a written question which said that a Muslim must perfect himself first, before he can preach to other people and other religions. On this occasion, we will hear a piercing response from Sheikh Didat regarding people like this. And also his firm answer to people who remain silent even seem to defend, when Christians say that Allah begot a son. In this country, there are some Muslims who preach Islam to Muslims only, but not to non-Muslims. Is this the practice of the Prophet Wasallam and his Sabah Sahaba? If not, could you give us some words of advice about this? No, Islam is to be preached to Muslims as well as non-Muslims. We have to look after ourselves. It's a char charity begins at home, but it doesn't end there. With the some of our brothers, it ends there. You see, in my country, we have a group of Muslims, very good Muslims, you know, very particular in the Salat, in their appearance and everything. But they say that we are not perfect. And that's true. They say that we are not perfect. Look at us. How many of us got beard? How many? Very few. How many of us got topi on? Very few. How many of us make Salat five times a day? Very few. So they said, we are not perfect. Make our people perfect first. So my question has been to them. I said, when will you, they become perfect? Give me a time limit. Give me a time limit that give us five years, give us 50 years, give us 500 years, and in 500 years' time, we all Muslims will be angels walking this earth. Everybody with a standard size beard, with a turban and a jubba, and we'll be all making salat five times a day. I said, give me a time limit. Five years, 50 years, 500 years, and I'll give it to you. Is it possible that any time in the history of this world, mankind will be perfect? Is it possible? When the Muslims were not perfect in the times of the Prophet, do you know that? The Sahabas were not perfect. Our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said on one occasion, he said, I like to, I feel like going and burning the homes of those Muslims who are not coming for Juma Salat. They were Muslims in Medina. The Sahabas, that means they are Sahabas. If they were, if the Prophet, there are Sahabas. They were not going for Juma Salat. In his lifetime, in his time, in his Medina. They were Muslims not going for Juma Salat. He said, I feel like going and burning the homes. Had it not been for my love and compassion for the, for the women and the children, I would have gone and burned their homes. In his lifetime, if the Ummah in Medina could not be perfect, you expect at any time one billion Muslims becoming angels and walking this earth before you start with the Nasara. And in the meantime, the Nasara is going to wait. He's waiting in this magazine. Man, they're planning your destruction. They're planning your destruction. Evangelism today, evangelism now. And I'm telling you, they're saying that Ahmad Didat is the danger. Ahmad Didat is the danger. You know that? Look, they didn't know about my coming here. They didn't know about this meeting. They know nothing about my coming. Uh, I arrived here on the 31st of August. They know nothing about it. But there's the articles about me. This is the latest. What from in Birmingham. Do you think that all this bickering between Islam and Christianity is constructive? Surely there is some common ground for people to address and cross one path, one path on important issues. The bond? Boundaries. Or boundaries on important issues. No, no, we are told to find common grounds. We are told not to bicker. Allah tells us. 
wala tujadilu ahl al kitab illa billati hiya ahsan don't argue don't debate don't dispute with the ahl al kitab meaning the jews and the christians illa except billati hiya ahsan except in ways better than mere disputation allah tells us that you don't do that but you have to call them allah is telling you call them pull say ya ahl al kitab ta'ala come allah is telling you to call them ta'ala come ila kalimatin sawa'in bainana wa bainakum that we come to common terms as between us and you let us get onto a common platform and the terms and conditions of getting together allah says allah na'budu illa allah that we worship none but allah so what your christian friend says she says yes, we believe in the same god so what god he said the father son and holy ghost the triune god so allah is telling you to tell him wala taqulu thalasa don't say trinity intahu khairul lakum this is stop it it'll be better for you innam allahu ilahu wahid for your allah is one allah he is not three in one you are not to tell him that you not to her to tell her that what kind of a muslim are you what are you get lost if you can't do that you can't tell the person that look this is not right worship allah the one and only god he said i believe in the same god so which god is a three in one so tell him wala taqulu thalasa allah is telling us to come together ya ahl al kitab la taghlu fi dinikum this is what allah tells you if you believe in the quran is allah's kalam so ya ahl al kitab la taghlu fi dinikum do not go to extremes in your religion wala taqulu ala allah illa al haqq and don't say anything but allah except the truth innam al masih most certainly the messiah is ibn maryam jesus the son of mary rasulullah is a messenger of allah wa kalimatuhu and a word proceeding from him fa amanu billahi wa rasulihi so believe in allah and his messenger this is your message now if that guy is going to insist this is trying to bring us to common grounds come if the person doesn't want to accept then let him go his way but it is your bounden duty to guide him says look god is not three in one allah doesn't beget a son wa qalu takhaza arrahman walada and allah says and they say that arrahman the merciful god has begotten a son allah ne beta jana is laqad jitum shay'an idda so one of the most abominable assertion one can make the worst swearing you can give allah is this that's what he says is crying from heaven and you say we mustn't we mustn't make the christians feel unhappy because you know once you start talking as look this is what allah is giving you if you don't believe in the quran get lost man be out of it let own up that you are a christian or a hindu or them or whatever you are don't say you are a muslim and you say no i we are not to tell the person allah says don't say that i begot a son laka jitum shay'in idda the most abominable assertion allah says the worst swearing you can give allah says the worst swearing i can give any of you is to call you a bastard Do you know that the worst swearing I can give you, which means I'm telling that your mother committed adultery, zina. Your mother was a zania, and created a bastard child. You, she bluffed you about your father. That guy is your father, your father, but that was not your father. That's what I'm saying. The worst swearing I can give anybody is to call you a bastard. Allah says the worst swearing you can give him is to say that Allah begot a son. Begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. That Allah had sex with Mary, Joseph the carpenter's wife, and created the bastard child Jesus. That's what the hadiths are saying. But they mean well. They mean well. It is your duty and my duty to draw their attention. Excuse me, excuse me, please, sir. You say Jesus is the only begotten Son, begotten, not made. Every Christian, this is his utterance. This words of blasphemy is the foundation of his faith. Jesus is the only begotten son, begotten not made, not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Every dog, pig and donkey was made by God, but Jesus is not like that. He is begotten means had sex and produced. Do you understand English? This is the English man's language. I'm talking his language. I'm asking him, what is to beget in your language, sir? Please explain. I'm in Hindi, I'm in Indian. I'm a Pakistani. You know, I don't know your language too well. Please explain to me. You say he's a begotten son, begotten, not made. What are you? Please, please tell me. Explain what you're trying to tell me. And no English man will open his mouth. I'm telling you. Talk to him gently, humbly, in humility. Ask him. When he says Jesus is the only begotten son, begotten, not made. Please, sir, explain to me what you are trying to emphasize. 
I'll call you my son. I know you won't mind it. Your father won't mind it. Your mother won't mind it. But when I visit you at home with some friends and I meet you and I embrace you, my Ahmad Beta, my son, mm -hmm, nobody minds. But this companion of mine who doesn't know our relationship, he's asking me, is he really your son? So I said, no, no. This young man loves me like a father, like a grandfather, and I call him a son. Okay? Nothing wrong. But instead I said, yes, he's my begotten son. Mera jana hua beta. You know what it means? I'm saying you're a bastard. You like that? Huh? You'll want to kill me now. I can call you anything else. You'll tolerate. You irritate me? I'm an old man. Old people get tired very quickly. You know that. We get irritated. You know that. Huh? So you irritate me. So I said, go, go, man, you're a bloody fool. So what you do? You laugh. I said, go, go, man, you're a bloody donkey. What do you do? You laugh. I said, you're a bloody ox. What do you do? You laugh. But as soon as I take your mother's name, you say, uncle, not one more word. Hmm? I'm going to lose all the respect I have for you. All that is lost. Once I take your mother's name, it's all finished. But you don't want to punch me on the jaw. So you say, look, I'm going to lose all the respect I have for you. It's all that you lost. Don't take my mother's name. Don't take my wife's name. Don't take my daughter's name. Call me what you like. Call me monkey. Call me donkey. Call me fool. Call me what you like, but don't take my mother's name. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Allah says, the worst swearing you can give me is this. That I begot a son. And the skies are ready to burst. And the earth to split asunder. And the mountains to fall down in utter ruin. And the walada. That they should say that Ar-Rahman, the merciful God has begotten a son. Does it move any Muslim? Any Muslim, I'm asking. When Allah cries from his heaven that these guys are swearing with the worst swearing. Huh? When I swear you, you, your mother, you want to break my jaw. That's what you do. You want to. And you have a right to. But when they swear Allah, you say you love Allah more than anything else. You love Allah more than your father and your mother. No. That's what you all claim. You all claim that, don't we? And when they swear him, what do you do? You laugh. <laughs> like monkeys. Bloody monkeys. Is this your love? Is this the... No. We have to talk. I don't say don't break his jaw. Don't shoot him. Don't kill him. Don't knife him. Talk to him. Reason with him so beautifully. So, sir, you know, you're saying Jesus is the only begotten son, begotten, not made. He said, please explain to me what you're trying to emphasize. You have slaughtered him already without dirtying your hands or your mouth. 